Mary Meet, Annie here. Today I'm going to share a little bit of my mess with you, and I'm hoping, actually, that it turns into something beautiful. I have been inspired to devote myself into 2015 to a redevotion to my sacred space, my altar. And there are a couple of reasons for that. The calling of Parvati and Kuan Yin towards poetry and art and music and movement and the way we express our passions through color and texture and form have made me want to do a devotional decoration of my altar on a regular basis. If you follow my channel, you know that traditionally I don't change my altar space all that often. I go from light to dark in the year, and I moved at other times to do things. And I always have something symbolic of the season that comes and go off of my altar. But I have been moved to take a different approach to it, at least for a while. Something in me wants to be expressed, I guess you could say. One of the things that urged me to reconsider how I want to decorate my altar space is the purchase of this cabinet. Almost brand new to me. I've only had it for a few weeks. And I had been inspired by watching videos a long time ago. I'm talking years ago. With folks who had used TV cabinets or dressers or clothing cabinets to host their altar space. And this is a new addition to our house. And it has wanted to be tended to a little differently than the open space that I had with my old altar space. This of course has the doors on it. You can see they're open. They're going to be open the vast majority of the time, but there are reasons in this tiny little house that we have that I will want sometimes to close them and keep my sacred space more private and intimate. What will always remain in it is the artwork that I have at the back of it. I'll try and get a better view of it for you. One light in this room does create a bit of a problem with reflections since it has a glass frame. But I thought since today I was going to decorate my altar for the between solstice to in bulk time of the year. But I would share that with you as a day in the life video. Let me see if I can get up on this without the glare showing up too much. Oh, that's not too bad. Found that online. Google searched the image and found the artist and gave it to myself as a present. It's going to stay the centerpiece, the back piece of my altar, as a focus point. So where I'm starting is, I've already put the altar cloths on. And what I did is, this is a scarf, a woman's scarf, that I got on clearance. This is probably back in the fall. And got it for a buck or two at, I think, a Walmart. But I like it because it's bronze and silver, and it shines, and it feels like winter time. And then I layered over top of it. I'm going for some sense of richness, uh, kind of what I've been called to. I think that might be Parvati's influence. And this, oh, let me see if I get out of the shadow of the light so you don't get my head in there. This is actually a table runner in burlap that has a shiny white embossing on it. There, that's better. My head's finally out of there. And I got this. I, on clearance on a Tuesday morning for, I think it was a less than $2. Nice addition to my collection of alder scarves. So here's the next project. Hello, Ernie. He's supervising, by the way. That won't surprise you if you're a fan of Ernie. Right? Are you supervising? I have purchased some scrapbooking paper. Did I just say scrapbooking? <laughs> How about scrapbooking papers? And they came in big books over here because they were on clearance too. Normally I think they were like 12 bucks a book and I got them for $2.50 a piece. Thank you, Michaels. And they're full of all different kinds of patterns. And I picked three patterns that feel like this time of the year. Why these patterns inspire me in particular is we are coming up on the time of year here that it will snow. We get that, tend to get it mostly in January and February. So I have picked complementary patterns out of here that feel like that time of year when the oh man I can't hold that up sorry about that there we go the time of the year when the skies in the morning they're almost I call them Easter egg colors at sunrise and also at sunset 
That's because of the ice particles in the air. So I was going for that kind of feel using turquoise and white as my themes. So what I plan on doing, this is an experiment, I plan on papering the inside of my cabinet. When you sit here and work in this space, it is delightful. It is, though, a little bit closed-in feeling during, especially the daytime, nighttime with candles, it's different. And I wanted to do something which would make this space feel aligned to the energy that I'm feeling at any given time of year, rather than peering into a cabinet of paneling, even though it's very nice wood in this cabinet. So my plan is to decorate the inside of the cabinet with these beautiful scrapbooking papers. I'll report back when I've done that. So I have to say that as a supervisor, Ernie didn't make the grade. <laughs> he keeps going on the bed, turning around and falling asleep. You don't want to help? Go back to sleep, honey. So I think it turned out pretty well. That's the back of the cabinet. And then I put a kind of like a banner of coordinating paper down the side. I had to use trim pieces because there aren't enough in the pack to do it all the same color. So that's going to be kind of the style that it gets done in. It was, um, it took a little more work <laughs> than I thought it was going to. Um, and I had flashbacks to the 70s when we were all wallpapering our houses very often involving flocked wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, I had all kinds of fun thoughts thinking back to that. And I had to get over being a perfectionist because scrapbooking paper isn't dye matched like wallpaper would be. So there's a little bit of a patchwork effect to where the pieces of paper come together. But I kind of like it. I'll throw on a, a little bit of a picture from further back in a sec. How I put it up is with these little double-sided little pieces of adhesive. They're not even an inch. I had thought originally that I would use archival putty that I used to use when I worked at the museum, but that's not in this witch's budget, I found out. So I got one of these packs. It's like 700 little tabs. They were on sale. I need to watch out for these, find more on sale, because they're like $7 a pack, which I couldn't afford normally. But they were on sale for 70% off, so I need to look for those and buy more again. And now, of course, these little things are probably all over me, all over Ernie, and all over this room. <laughs> That'll be part of the cleaning up process. Let me do a quick shot from farther back so you can see the color in the cabinet. So I think that turned out pretty good. And it'll look even better when I hang the picture in the middle at the back. That'll hide a, some of the rough looking ways the paper comes together, but the picture will be over top of it. It won't be as obvious. Yeah, that kind of like made it look a little less patchworky. Of course, the picture's shaking at the moment. But yeah, I like the look of that. I'll show you what I'm adding on to the rest of it here as I tidy up and start to put my actual altar space together. So the first thing I've added in is this little wire stand. I got used to, well, I guess starting about 10 years ago, having two heights to my altar. And for lots of reasons. I'll put workings on the top that needs personal attention or just feel like certain things need to be elevated at any given time. So I put that on top of the alder cloth. So I did add a few more things and I'll tell you what I added. The candlesticks on either side. They came with this from our old house and I almost didn't bring them because they're too big to sit just about anywhere in this tiny house. Obviously, I was meant to bring them because now they're here. Added the God and Goddess candles. His needs a little attention. He's a little wimpy. Needs some trimming of his wick. And I think probably I've mentioned in the past that I use Coventry candles on my altar. So those as well as the one for Hestia in the middle. 
And over here, that's actually a tree topper. I have been taking to putting something which feels obelisky <laughs> on my alders. Something that rises up. It, I think it's the instinctual balance in my mind, the phallic balance to Hestia's statue, which is here. And this one really was a tree topper, a glass tree topper I got for a couple of bucks at the end of the year. And there's my little star goddess that my Anamkara, Luna, made for me. And a representation. Again, a recycled Christmas decoration I got at a dollar store of the impending arrival of the stag and the sense of return that aspect of the year. And underneath some very fake, um, I call them silver dollars. Obviously they're real at florist shops. These are not. They are artificial. They always remind me of winter time. And this little thing in the middle here doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's easier to put it up and keep it up rather than try and put it back out whenever I'm doing a certain focus that requires a picture or using my mirror. It's actually a tripod. And if I set my mirror on it, you'll see how I use that for the mirror. It would be nice if I at least had kept that up for you. There you go. It just holds everything for me. And then when I do a meditation for Guan Yin, her picture will be there. Nyx goes up there for the dark moon. Whatever goddess I'm working at at any given time will go there. Sometimes a sigil, a focus symbol I'm focusing on will go there. But it actually feeds back into that shelf and it's actually more awkward to take it on and off. So I'm just going to leave it there all the time. It almost always has something on it. So I'll finish putting the rest of the things off and come back to you. So I have to say, I could not be happier with the result. I'm very, very content with the way this looks. It looks rich, like I hoped it would look. I was inspired by shrines I've seen, Hindu and Buddhist shrines that have had beautiful things in them and beautiful colors. And the fact that I can change like the personality of this on a regular basis and spend an afternoon um, in devotion as I redecorate it, recolor it. I think it's going to be a great part of 2015. Let me come in just a little closer so you can see what the top of it ended up looking like. A wonderful way to spend the afternoon and I'm glad that you spent it with me. Thank you for sharing this afternoon with me. It ended up being a wonderful way to spend time and I'm glad I thought to bring you along with me. I did think before I ended that I would mention to you my thoughts on sharing of our altars in our sacred space because I do honor that some of you have an opinion against that. I don't. It is a way of sharing something of myself, yeah, a little bit intimate, a little bit personal, but the passion and the love and the devotion for what any of us do is so obvious in the simplest altars that we have. That quiet space that might have one meditation piece on it, or something like mine that collects a lot of things. You'll never see my altar with a work in progress You'll never see it just as it was as I prepare to or have done a ritual. But I am very happy to share some of what inspires me and moves me. And I love seeing the very same thing when you share it. I wish you all mirth and reverence. Merry part. <laughs>